Hello and welcome back, esports fans. We are here live with game number two on day two of our EU Contenders Trials. This is on Overwatch Monkey Bubble. I'm FBI Tugboat, joined here with me. Man of class, and we got Sinza. I believe I pronounced that correctly. Down there, producers, yes. Brox, producers away, producing away, making our job task is just so much easier, and we do appreciate that. Man of class, what did we just see between Vox Nihili and Morningstar Esports? It only just ended, so we're still fresh in the memory. Of course, we saw Morning Stars losing out to Fox Nihili, but uh, they made it a lot closer than they did yesterday against Young, sure. Young and Beautiful. Uh, of course, Fox Nihili just says they're throwing, of course. You know, you got to get some excuse, but I do think that Morning Stars <laughs> played a lot better uh, and it's starting to look more and more like it's like the team that we want them to be. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's going to be an upwards battle. Will they maybe get it, be able to get into the top two? Um, but at least for now, they're going to go for the map wins, the series wins, and then see where it goes. They got a, still a building unit, still not as uh, well practiced as some of these other team, teams as a team. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I have faith they can get there. But, of course, we're getting into the next, the next match now. And it's going to be a clash that's been happening before, especially during the last Open Division season, before both of these teams actually got to Trials and then Contenders for a few weeks. So it's going to be Roar Esports versus Avoided. And uh, yeah, I mean, these teams should be familiar with each other, but you never really know. Roar Esports has some changes, new main tank, uh, a new uh, new DPS here and there. So uh, they ha used to have Multi, the young main tank from Sweden. Now they have Timu in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Fuki is new, a new player, if, if I'm not mistaken. Naru is Naru Admiral Raptor, Zaitor, uh, Ellie is still there. So they're 100% in this uh, in this still relatively new team vibe. The roster wasn't announced until a few days ago as well. Uh, whereas Avoided, they just play together all the time. We said it yesterday, they're the community of one tricks. They're really the, <laughs> the players that want to show that Overwatch can be more than just everyone mirroring the same comps against each other. So that's again, not what we're expecting today. And does Roar have something prepared for them? That's the question that we had yesterday um, uh, about Vasta. But I do think that Roar might be just a little bit notch above Vasta in that preparation stage. Uh, maybe their team is just a little bit more practiced at those type of things. And like I said, they're familiar with Avoided to a degree. So what we'll see come out here for the side of uh, of Avoided is going to change a lot about um, yeah what Roar is going to do. Yeah, um, also different maps and whatnot. Uh, Roar Esports and Vasta, definitely some parallels you could draw, but... Avoided, like you said, coming through. Uh, if there is a dream in Overwatch, it's not to see the mirror comps over and over again as a caster, right? Like, let's just be yeah. honest. Yeah. I, I think it's... I think we're just looking for diversity and you know exciting plays and just everything, everything you could ever hope for, and just exactly. people showing off the best capacity on the hero they want to play, right? It's like uh, Joe Neck not never being able to play Zenyatta because the meta meta yes. doesn't go for it. That is something you never want to see happen. I think avoided perfectly embodies that where they just say we play what we're good at, what we want yep. to play. So exactly. today we're going to see these teams come out. And of course, like I said before, does Roar have something special? Will Avoid it change anything from what they did yesterday? Avoid is going to go with the same thing they did yesterday, I think, with Lightbringer and Ball uh, going over to the Wrecking Ball in Winston. And Totti on the Torbjorn, yes, and on that beautiful far eye. The Pharmacy comes out with T-Sorcerer and then Hempe on the Ana on the other side. It's going to be Dive as well. Yeah, hardcore dive. Uh, with the exception of the Moira, this is uh, exception of the Moira, the ball. Excuse me. You can see this composition in you know Overwatch 2018. But Toddy taking yeah. out Yuki with a nicely placed head shot. Uh, I uh, this is going to be a Rory Sports team that is probably going to come back and wait to push this at six. But what I can guarantee, you, Mana Class is avoided. Pharmacy combination between T Swords and Yezen goes unchecked. That will be a deciding factor all day long in this game. And Eli just felt the fire from it. A lot of damage against t Sorcerer. Naru just absolutely chasing that one down. Gonna fall to a nasty boot from Tractor Kid that's ball afterwards. And then going to respond to his opponent ball afterwards. So Timu actually having his work cut out for him here as he is getting chased down in a class. Yeah, and it's not quite over this fight. It just keeps on going with the balls rolling around. They finally got that fire out of the sky. Mercy already down earlier. And oh, so low there is Teemo. We'll actually get away with their life. And so does Ball. Both wow. breaking balls. Incredibly low health. They will both be able to get healed up. But meanwhile, this fight is still raging on. It looks like Roar might actually get the upper hand of this one, Tugboat. 
Yeah, avoided. Uh, this is not going to go to their advantage if this push stays on. So Naro actually has T Sorcerer's number all day long. That's twice now that Naro's just come out absolutely slapping, finding T Sorcerer's number. He doesn't even have a bit of the ultimate yet, and he's been pocketing this Pharah exclusively. Lightbringer following as well. Main tank deleted here as Toddy follows suit. And this is avoided, who has a much harder task at hand. Yeah, they still haven't really flipped this point. The barrage finally comes out from Yezen. Beautifully done. But right now, it, the, the diva of Naru is just on point. They were expecting the pharmacy. They've been shutting it down brilliantly so far. Yezen just doesn't get anything done, but this point still hasn't flipped Tugboat. The barrier comes out. Will Roar finally be able to do it? Not with this stall. They keep getting the kills, but they also keep getting the percentage not in their favor. Finally, I think the Mercy will get cleaned up and this point will flip at 63%. I think that's wow, like a good 30% yeah. of stall coming out almost. Yeah, th that was just an absolute war through and through for the majority of this 63% that Avoid was able to take down. Now, a fantastic job for them to be able to stall through that and get that time. Ooh, a nasty missed Tracer Bomb in that one. Fuki is going to be regaining from one on that Sticky Bomb. Toddy following as well. Timo and the other one, Tractor Kid, the ball, just finding all the value in the world from these boobs off the side on Elios. Now it's Timo's turn to have Sorcerer's number. Gets up close and Sorcerer's are actually playing it a farther away. Love to see it as Lucio main. Love to see Admiral Raptor getting those Lucio shots. The tracking perfect. Now we're forced to come back a little bit as Timu does fall. Half the tank core for the side of avoided and morning or and warning for people calling. But this is Fuki continuing on with this. Now Eli pulling that blade, screaming that Genji voice line, getting a little bit lower on the back, but Tractor Kid being the last on his chopping block. A three kill with that Dragon Blade was so clutch to get out there. Get the fire out of the sky, manages to get that ball. It's just beautifully done. And Admiral yeah. Raptor and Zytor have been helping out so much dealing with that pharmacy. They're able to heal everybody up. They're able to be evasive enough not to just get one shot by the Pharah. And uh, yeah, the damage of both Moira and Lucio is relatively easy to get onto a pharmacy. Now Naru goes down early, wasn't in mech, and the Barrage gets one as well. A lot of Barrage healing gets gone. Two on that one as Timo gets another boop off the side and through the thick of things, avoided able to take this point again. They'll be taking percentage points with two down as well. Toddy yeah. and Tractor Kid gonna be starting that march back to point. Yeah, a lot of things happening here. We haven't even been able to talk about the ultimate economy, but now it really starts to come in here. Wrecking Ball and D.Va having their ultimates ready on the side of uh, Roar, as well as close to being Sound Barrier, but there's some online as well. Will that Molten Core get more value than the first one from Toddy soon? The, the Nano Boost comes out for Yezin, takes advantage from it. gets out of Mech and then deleted shortly thereafter, where it's Fuki now back from spawn. Boosting back coming here soon. Toddy trying to get something done. There's a minefield out now from the side of Teemo. This Roar Esports fighting all over point as we hit 99 for avoided. Lots done here. Toddy now utilizing that Torb ultimate out. Still got a little bit left in the tank and trying to get all over. Here's Yezin. He has that barrage but needs to get away from this Pharah or this Diva first. Diva's still alive though. Doesn't have that defense matrix soon. Getting up close and personal. Yezin actually playing a very dangerous game by staying on to point and just like that nice boop but this ball will be able to get back or should be able to get back now that's Fuki's first tracer bomb kill and against a pharaoh what is going on here man of class i think uh there was on the ground they did get the res back off the lightbringer again goes off the map that's been happening a few times now and timo was able to have a grapple hook it ready just to get back on the onto the high ground will now be able to start this la very last fight off with a blade and a coalescence with only a barrage and maybe Nano on the other side. The nano barrage comes out, that could be devastating. But will they have the time to get back? I think they do. Yeah, Hempei gonna have to get another 25% on that one beforehand. The flip comes all the way through. Avoided takes it with no transgressions occurring on point. Interesting stuff. Nobody from the side of Rory able to get there as Hempei does fall. UK getting that dive damage in. Hammer Raptor as well, falling on this one as Lightbringer dies again. Lightbringer on the Winston just not able to get the same amount of value. Eli does have that blade, but no need to pull it out quite yet as the clip coming back through. 99.9 for both of these guys. Nice stick as Fuki finds his second. Here's a blade for Eli, trying to get something going, and Blade gives it one to the back of the head for Yas, and after that, Barad comes out close again. A dangerous game being played from him. Lightbringer deleted down on point again.
and Roar picks up the first point in a beautiful fashion. Toddy was under so much pressure, tries to come back as Symmetra, and they just focus down the, the, the DPS first. They choose to give that point up in order to get those backline picks and then get all that damage value and the damage advantage in their fight. Because both the Torbjorn and Symmetra, once they get set up, you don't want to have to deal with those. Toddy is going to back, go back over to that Torbjorn. He's going to try and do this again. And I think on Lighthouse, it might be even more threatening because you fight into the open a lot more than you do on uh, on Lighthouse there. And Well is just also, again, just a playing ground for boop kills. Not a lot of targets that are easy to boop. But we saw Lightbringer go off the map a lot of times, though. So... You know, maybe uh, maybe some more here. Yeah, it Very would be surprising, surprising, but I think I think they're really capitalizing on Lightbringer jumping in, and then the ball comes in to boop him off, or the Diva, or something like that. So they're recognizing the cooldown difference. Yes, not the action, but the reaction. Lightbringer, I'm jumping in, cooldown ability started, and they just take advantage of that one all day long. Admiral Raptor will be looking for him for lots of boops as his freak gets very, very low. Yasmin takes out his counterpart DPS as t source are forced to get up and away, but Lightbringer gives it all the way up there, gives him the static amplifier up in the air. Who would have guessed it? Yasmin back in this one now as he's getting his number taken by this diva, and actually Sonaro just kind of abandons that one, goes inside and loses his mech. Admiral Raptor, oh, the boop almost there, but that was Lightbringer able to catch the corner just in the last second. Run board with him and try, yeah, trying to boop tanks like this is, uh, it's an admirable uh, pursuit, but I'm not sure how much value that's going to get you. No, I'm not sure either, but they do have control of the point as they are avoided right now. Roar was trying to get it back, but it's going to be a similar story as it was on Lighthouse earlier. They're going to have to work for it because otherwise it gets stalled out forever. They are in numbers advantage. That minefield could bar them from an escape, but Fuki mm. is popping off your tugboat. Yeah, it's not necessarily, again, about that first action, about who takes point first. It's about who takes it second. This is Royal Year Sports about to take this one after deleting down Lightbrinker. Yazan, now Sorcerer, going to have his work cut out for him just by staying alive. Ball is back. Ball gets a uh, one kill, actually. Naru, I think, might have gotten booed. I don't think ran out there by himself. Just no credit for our Tractor Kid ball player. Now flipped on over from 40 to 7, 8% for the side of Royal Year Sports. Yeah, it looks like we will get that percentage going for them a little bit earlier than it was last time. Last time, I think they got to 60 almost when they uh, flipped it. 63. And uh, this point can be notoriously hard to take back, especially against dives that can just keep backing up. And the ultimates are now going to come out. It's a light fest on the top of my screen. Yeah, Toddy here has gotten the good spray, but I don't believe there's a whole lot of members who are sectioned off to that point. They just get on out of dodge quickly. Timo doing Timo things, spinning around on point, does take out Lightbringer there towards the end, not able to utilize that Primal Rage. Not sure if he had it right before or just decided this one was not worth it, but avoid these sports, half of them gone, uh, and everybody who's dead is the one who's with ultimates. Hanpei will have his rally here soon, but T-Sorcerer, Yazin, and Lightbringer all have those glowing ultimate symbols. And it does seem like Roar is sort of figured out, avoided here. I think they're not uh, not completely there. But this oh. ultimate kill, Fuki has been popping so far. I think that's the main problem. Normally, avo Roar is, uh, is avoided, is ready for their fire to be the distraction. But this time, the trace from the other side is distracting them more. Yeah, Fuki came out a little bit slow, but he got tired of missing. He's been sticking these bombs, like, just left and right. It really has not missed one in a while. I'm going to this next now. fight, though. You see these yeah, ultimates once again. They just keep charging him so fast, Tugbo. They just keep going. Sixty percent already. Yeah, he's he's giving the necessary interactions in the back. He's about to have another sticky bomb as we come out. Minefield now utilized from Timo. Got a few members in there, but not one hundred percent sure. Here's a barrage and Fuki and more just just to turn their attention to the skies. Yeza not able to live through that one. Yuki trying to get something going against a Brig and a uh, uh, yeah, very courageous attempt here. Forced to come back a little bit as Zeitbringer does take his first kill a little bit against Zytor. No more ability, no coalescence coming out from them for a while. Eli Fuki both have those DPS ultimates. This Tractor Kid's minefield does take out his counterpart, the opposing ball for the time being. 99 now against 40 or so for the side of Avoided. But just like that, the Tractor Kid's, yeah, Tractor Kid's minefield finds all the advantage in the world. 45, 47% now for the side of Avoided. And the question is, how much does Roar really care about that? Because they've still got three ultimates ready. The the sound barrier is getting close-ish. And there's only a Molten Core on the other side. Everyone else is at 50 or lower. So a good advantage here for Roar if they can get back in there. And if this fight goes long, it might just be the last fight we see on this point. Yeah, we're definitely reaching 
close to that territory now if you keep trying to get up here but we talked earlier about the advantage that you know just simply being uh higher up being aerially attached gonna be bringing to the various teams tractor kid taking out a two-piece here is daylight trying to get something going there's a blade out the blade is now in timu finding one against t sorcerer uh, half the healing for the side of avoided now done one of the damage gone for side of rory sports is avoided doing a good job of holding on here yeah so 89 percent and with only a couple members of movement abilities for avoided they're gonna have their work cut out for them getting back i think they'll be able to make it the ball's going out to the right side so timo will be able to touch um, that that will not be the issue, but they got to get some value out of these ultimates. They still have a few online, and especially that sound bear is going to be huge. Oh, ball going into the well. That's a great play from Timo. Yeah, Timo taking out his counterpart, the opposing ball. Not something we're going to see very frequently. Eli has switched now over to the Soldier 76. A little bit of a different look for this kit scan. Fuki there. Fuki gets the stick. Nicely done. Hanfei falling again to a Fuki. Well placed bomb. Lots of members from the side of Warrior Sports getting out the necessary damage as Ginza and Keyswords are forced to hit the hills on this one. Naro getting up close and personal, shutting down anything they get going from up top. And here comes the barrage. This might be an exciting factor. Timo gets there just in time as Buki does fall. Track to get able to take one. Not going to matter. Rory Esports comes through a slapping for a 2 0 win on Elios. This is a first 2 2, and they're halfway there, Mana Class. 100% the case and we're going to blizzard world next we will see probably those substitutions come out from from avoid as well and if i have to guess though i do feel like this is not what avoided is sort of used to playing like yes they can play this but having you know toddy have to be on the torbjorn lightbringer on the winston it's not the signature style that we know them for of course they are definitely trying and they're definitely uh, you know, broadening their roster, broadening their capacity, and Lightbringer has had tank experience in the past. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't think they're quite there yet as a unit. So Roar being able to capitalize on that, doing a very good job of, uh, of picking a composition that actually works very well against what they're doing, as long as they can shut down that Farah and they can keep the, par keep the parts on the ground moving, they have a very good chance of just having an advantageous f ground fight. Because, of course, Pharmacy, that's two in the sky. And if you only have to invest one or two in that every now and then, you've got to be even, if not advantageous, on the low ground. So Roar at recognizing that that's what they have to do, executing it beautifully as well. And now that we're going to Blizzard World, that will probably be a um, a, a bit of a change. They'll probably be avoided changing something out. I think they might... No, they're not. It looks like they're just saying they're ready. So they're going in with the exact okay. same thing. Maybe they're just going to keep on playing this dive. That's very possible. Maybe someone's sick, someone's power is out. Uh, yeah, oh, no, they're not ready. So we have a few in the lobby, of course. So the teams are like, oh, are you ready? Can we start yeah, playing yeah, again? Yeah. They're like, no, no, we're, we're not ready. So I think they might still make the swap uh, substitution. Uh, they're going to swap sides at least. So Roar's going to start on the, uh, on the attack here. Um, and Mini Me does seem to be coming into the lobby, so we okay. will likely see Lightbringer be swapped out for that. I was, yep. lo I was a little bit surprised that they hadn't done that, but then again, you know, we we talked to Lightbringer yesterday. They say they want to throw some curveballs at teams, um, and uh, I'm 100 percent expecting them to keep doing that. But for now, I do think they don't really have a reason to swap out uh, what, what's been working so far. Uh, on, on Ilios, maybe on Control, they'll revisit that. But I do definitely think that... Uh, uh, ooh. Yeah, so Toddy's going to get subbed out again. I think they want to keep playing with the Torbjorn. So they're not going... So yesterday, they went with the Junkrat Farah on Blizzard World. Mm -hmm. Correct? So this at time around, for, it seems... Yeah, at least for the first... Uh... For the first point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now that they're expecting Roar to potentially keep playing Dive, they're not going to pick the Junkrat. Because I do think the Junkrat it gets a lot less value against Dive than maybe against other comps. So that's why they're probably bringing in, uh, keeping in Lightbringer. So they're swapping Toddy, uh, Toddy out. Lightbringer is going to the DPS slot. And Mini-Me comes into that main tank slot. Mm -hmm. So we'll likely see the Avoided Special, where it's going to yeah, be yeah. Lightbringer, Torbjorn, Yezen on the Farah, Mini-Me on the... Yep. Uh, on the Orisa, Tractor Kid or Ball on the Wrecking Ball, T-Sorcerer on the Mercy, and Hempe on the Ana or the Baptiste, depending on what they kind of feel like in that in that situation. Um, so likely no Junkrat this time around, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think they've thought about that and definitely thought this is like the play to make. Um, and yeah, now the question is, will Roar change anything? Will they just go with the same thing they did in the last one? 
Will they go with the exact same uh, lineup? Will they change up a few things? Maybe they go that full meta thing with a double barrier. Um, I know. I mean, we're going to see it soon. And uh, I'm excited for it. Yeah. Uh, Roar Esports with no roster changes, but hero-wise, their team competition might be a little bit different. Uh, I have to agree with the avoided switch here. Um, it wasn't that Tati was playing poorly on Torbjorn by any means. It was just that the Torb and particularly the turret was getting shut down a lot, right? It, it makes sense to switch around uh, the tank core because, again, Lightbringer was coming through here and playing a very, very aggressive Winston. We saw him fall a couple times at the beginning of team fights. So, again, it just kind of makes sense to uh, to have a little bit more conservative look at this. Yes, in T-Swords, we know exactly where they're going. Hampe now over on the Brig. I'm not sure if we've seen Hampe on Brig yet. Nope, I'm uh, I'm not sure either. I think we I think we did maybe yesterday, but the brick does make a lot of sense. It's definitely a, a pick that has been run a lot in the you know lately. 100. percent The the armor's still good. Brig in general is still good against dive. Uh, she still does a lot of healing. You know the the, the rallies gets that value. The whip shot, the shield bash. It's still a very good hero. Just doesn't have the overheal anymore. And we will see Roar scout it out and swap over to the exact same thing they did just now. They don't want to get caught by the Farah. Uh, and they do still want to have that mobility. They want to have that burst damage. So they go with that full dive. But Timo again on the Wrecking Ball. Yeah, so the Lucio Moira healing core for the side of Roar Esports makes sense. Just something a lot more mobile like you were saying. So something we've seen actually last matchup is we're, we're on board here with Eli coming all the way back around as Fuki takes his first. No Torbjorn here is... Void are going to be fighting this 5-2-6. North Torbjorn turret as well. Yezen getting a lot of unwanted attention up top as Admiral Raptor does take a nice little boop action against Hampe. Not sure if that was off the side, just a finishing blow for his Sonic Lampifier. But a lot of back and forth here. Hampe getting the res off, or getting res. t Sorcerer managed to find that one in the thick of things as Eli does fall to a whole lot of attention and damage. Yezen very close to that barrage. As there's no reason to stop this offensive push. Yeah, and we've seen how good Avoida uh, reacts to having control over an objective. They will lose Yezen here late, but so there will be an advantageous spawn because Rory Sports can get in very quickly, and they're going to do just that. Immediately threaten this point, get the turret out of the way, and now their offense can truly begin. So I think, yeah, I think the issue there was there's not enough healing for Hanfe. t Source had to look other ways while Yezen was trying to get something going. Bra uh, Barrage still on board for him as BK finds another stick against Hanfe. He's got to be tired of that. Already, t source getting very, very low. Again, that Diva giving a lot of attention up top, and Naru just sacrifices the body to make sure that barrage goes nowhere. Naru continuing on getting this one going. Is Eli and more. That's the side of Rory Sports down bottom taking unnecessary picks. And uh, Naru, it's just it is so stuff. amazing. Like not Naru, you said they gave up the body. They didn't even give up the body. I thought so too. I thought they would have lost the mech there, but it was just that sliver of HP they had left. They could get yep. healed back up and just keep on rolling with that diva body. And now there's a lot of ultimates online for the attack. Roar Esports in a great, I get it. yeah, isn't it, 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 exactly right? Like they're in a great spot here with their ultimates, and there's not that much to work with on the defense. They'll have maybe a molten core. They get the rally and the, the Valkyrie, so they have some sustain. But it's hard to fight against the all everything that's going to come out here on the other side. Yeah, uh, yeah. Roar is about five seconds away from a five-man ultimate ability for them. Uh, Zytor on the Moira, the only one not uh, up there quite yet. And here comes Blade from Eli. Here comes the Sticky Bomb from Fuki. Actually misses one for the first time in a while. Eli getting a lot of attention against him from that ball. And it's just simply hard to Dragon Strike, what, four or five times against the same ball. And they have those shielding capabilities. Here comes the Torvolt all over point. Lightbringer falling after getting that one out and turret following suit. This is Rory Sports in the driver's seat. And I really think they did a great job of shutting down the Genji Blade. Uh, the Brigitte reaction was good from Hempe, Timo following it up. But they just couldn't win the rest of the fight because they have invested so many resources into defending against that Genji. Now the Minefield comes out from the defense though. Nicely done. Minimi gets to kill the Aptimal Raptor and Naru's out of mech. Yeah, wow, so Zytor still holding that Coalescence, but not really able to find a whole lot of value with it. Fuki trying to go duck hunting here, sitting shots up top, not gonna matter. And uh, even through the thick of things, rest of avoided finding kills left, right, and center. Now talk to me yeah. about ultimate co uh, economy here for a second. I just, I just kind of felt like, uh, like, like Ball was just yelling at Yes and just keep flying away, keep flying away. I can get the straitzer. Just, just hide. It's fine. And it, it, it didn't work out. But yeah, ultimate economy wise, Fuki will have a pulse bomb. 
Uh, he has them with a barrage, and Minimi will have a supercharger, but everyone else is quite far away. Teemo might get up to that, uh, that minefield, but the cart's in a very precarious position. It's much harder to push into this because the spawns of the defense are incredibly close. You need to find a win a fight convincingly, not lose any or maybe not more than one, maybe two members. Otherwise, you just won't be able to get that point there. Yeah, I mean, and this is Aurora Esports team. Every single hero on this team has a, not just even a small one, but a significant movement ability. Throw a little Lucio speed boost action on top and you're looking at a very, very mobile team. Getting a little bit closer here, honestly, I'm looking at Avoided, uh, and they have the ultimate advantage. They have to know to a certain extent they did because they saw so many ultimate calls just in the last team fight. Yazan continuing to get the business from this Naru Diva tries to come down, and Naru lives with his all his mech again. Okay, all right, I was gonna say if Naru lives with his mech again after another barrage from up top, I'm just gonna absolutely lose it. Lightbringer and more trying to hold on here. Avoid Esports has their work cut out for them. As are now pulling out this whole lesson, he's got this mercy in his sights and does take that down. And gets a whole lot of advantage by taking out most of a minefield afterwards. Called this guy the Minesweeper. Jazen does get one there towards the end against Naru, the baby diva, but it looks like Avoided has done a good job. Oh no, Avoided has lost this, excuse me, and Rory Sports has done a good job of stabilizing. Yeah, very well done. I am 100% uh, in favor of Roar getting that checkpoint there. They did a great job avoiding certain ultimates of Avoided. And now Fuki is just going to keep on pressuring on. This is like the the, the the escort mode, right? Where Dive just keeps on going forward on a map like Watchpoint Gibraltar. just keeps getting the space, keeps pushing it into spawn. And uh, eventually it's going to run out their luck. But right now they have the ultimates, they have the positioning, and they have the numbers. Yeah, it's all about that uh, that little bit of space, that yardage getting in front of this payload so they just can keep on pushing in. And really, this last corner here is just such a big, big objective. Once they get this, it looks like, okay, Void actually going to give this one up. Interesting stuff. Two minutes to go here as we see ultimates all across the top. Buki actually even missed that one. I, I, he's got to be about 50% at this point as Zytor now pulling out the coalescence. A lot of ultimates now being shouted here uh, between point and back towards defense. That's Yazin's barrage that decides a team fight again though. Minimi had the assistance there. He had the, uh, he had the supercharger so that really made this uh, capable to just come through very very quickly and get those kills. Tractor Kid falling there in the end is not great for the defense though. No, it will be another uh, hold here for Avoided, but it's getting closer and closer. One good fight win, and then maybe some extra cleanup for the respawns. The Eli is ready for the blade. They're going to throw it out soon, and there's no immortality field to work against. You got to dodge Eli's the break. Got this Torb in his sights and actually lets him run back. Eli just opts to take out the turret on this one, trying to get with the rest of his team, and that's Rory Esports that just takes advantage of that kind of middling area that time when nothing else is going on. Avoided Esports, the wholehearted team kill. They keep on dragging these ultimates out of Avoided in a seemingly unnecessary fashion. Avoided kind of maybe almost expecting more ultimates to come out from Roar. Because Roar's got five now. They just made the call. Hold the ultimates. It's fine. We'll win the next five with all the ultimates we have. We just use two or three. And then we have two more for the respawns. 45 seconds. We'll make it. We'll make it. Might be in overtime, but we'll get there. No, I'm with it. I'm with it. Apt analysis, man, in class. I like it a lot. There's really nobody on the side of Avoided outside of Yezna who's been able to get this that quickly. And he's only at 75 himself. Timo over here. Minefield should be coming out here soon. Nope. Actually going to stall that one out a little bit because Rory Swords just dropped their sound here. Lightbringer falling here. Timu doing a fantastic job of diving. Briggs going to be his next target. Hayampe falling on that one. Timu getting all the value in the world. There's another stick. Fuki proving me wrong. I love it. This is Roar Esports doing fantastic things. Hasn't actually lost anybody until Timo. He got a lot of aggression. Is going to get taken out for it there towards the end. But I think Esports might be holding on to this. Zytor has that coalescence and here it comes. Tractor Kid just getting absolutely chased down here. The healing and damage being traded all the way through. And there's the barrage from up top. Naru meets him up there again. And that's not going to bode well for it. Yeah, no barrage wants to meet a defense matrix. Or a defense, uh, uh, diva, excuse me, on the way there. Here comes the yeah, nice res. Yeah, and the thicker thing is too, so Yazan's back in this one, full six against full six, as mini me is supercharging, gets deleted just as quickly as it comes out. A lot of damage against this Torb. There's a stick again! Hanfei just getting absolutely sniped by these sticks. Take it off the carts! But the, yep, Oh doesn't. no! Yep. They so were so keys. good. I mean, that fight was turning a little bit. I do think Roar was losing some members, but they could have maybe done the other way and forced them off the cart instead. But unfortunately, they almost get to the end, not quite. And now it's up to avoid it to break that record. 
But yeah, so many good plays. I really do feel though that someone on the side of Roar just keeps to have say, have to tell Naru which button they have to press to move because I feel like all they have been seeing is the is like the sky at the map. They've just been looking <laughs> upwards. It's like where where is Yesen? Where where, yep. where do I have to point Metafentris Matrix to this time? And then when he hasn't dies, they can finally see, oh, we're on point three. Okay, okay, this is where we are. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Naru 100% helping with uh, uh, focusing that down. But once again, Saitor and Admiral Raptor have a, are far, very integral in making that happen as well. Constantly shooting uh, bullets at it as well. Constantly having Zytor also right-click it. Because it doesn't even mean that you can kill that, that fire all the time, but it means that the Mercy has to keep not damage boosting the Farah. So it denies a lot of extra added value. And you can also choose to focus the Mercy so the Farah has to play more safe because otherwise the Mercy dies. So a lot of good playing around that pharmacy comp of uh, of Roar. They couldn't quite finish the map, but they got very far. Did a very good job, got good momentum. And uh, now it's up to avoid it too again. They have to break that. And they're going to do it with the same comp. T Sorcerer to stay on that Mercy, yes, and on that Farah. And Lightbringer on the attack Torbjorn. We know it can work. But Fuki and El Ellie, once again, on that Tracer Sombra, they're going to try and deny everything that they want to do and set up. One of the matchups we're going to see here continuously is Fuki, now Eli probably getting a little bit more involved against the Hanpei Brig. Again, the uh, the two up top and the Soul Healer down bottom, uh, who's forced to take care of, or forced to help out his Lightbringer Torb, the Mini-Me, Arissa, and the Tracker Kid Ball. Lots going on there, and actually Eli getting sniffed out very, very early, as does T Sorcerer, so a DPS from one side, a DPS from the other side, as well as a healer. This is Ryu Sports doing a great job on defense so far. Naru looking to get up here. Briggs says no go, but T Moon and company is still getting the picks that they need, and is all but a team kill against the side of Avoided. That will be a good start here from Roar on the defense. Of course, they have to buy as much time as they can. And even obviously try to hold the first point, that would be even better. But the ultimates are taken up. Of course, Fuki on the lead on that one, up to 80% almost already. And uh, that first stick, can they get it? Yes or no? That's the question, because that's the only ultimate that's going to be in line for the remainder of this first fight. Second fight, really. The, the first strike ultimate is always going to have so much value here, and Kuki's not very far away from it. But actually doesn't even need to take out Hanpei in this one. Admiral Raptor providing a little bit of value, a little bit of help on this one as t are done as well. So avoided healing core just like that. Done, dusted, we'll see you back in spawn. And I think it's beautiful that what what uh, Avoid is doing here, they're still getting these kills, but Roar is going for this incredibly aggressive play. They're waiting for them to rotate and then catch the backline in rotation, especially Hempe is under a lot of fire. Like I said, they are getting some kills here on Avoid it now. Throw the minefield out on point. This will be a good opportunity for them to get it because they will have the numbers advantage for quite a while. Just like that, Yezin, a little bit low, but is going to be assisted there in the back. About halfway now for the side of Avoided on point. We're trying to get back on this one. Here comes the Coalescent. Zytro trying to start out this team fight with it. Fuki, Timo both deleted. Lightbreaker going for the other side of four to five for right now. Now here comes the EMP. Eli trying something. Lightbringer shuts it down instantly. The EMP against Avoided providing a lot of value. Here comes the sound mirror, but that only connects with half of Roar Esports. In through the thick of things, the res comes through for Yazin. He comes back and instantly takes down a baby diva. Zaitor as well, so the main healing core for the side of Roar Esports done. Yuki trying to hold on to this one, as are other members of the side of Roar Esports. But I think Avoided has taken this one. Yeah, Avoided will eventually get it, but this stall has been incredible. Three minutes, 50 left for second point, and that can drain away very quickly on this one. But they've got a barrage ready. They've got a minefield ready. It's the second one already from Ball. You can just see how much damage they output. And uh, that will really be all that's on the field. Of course, Fuku will have a pulse bomb, but I don't think we even need to mention that anymore at this point. <laughs> they get they get these pulse bombs so quickly because they can just keep farming these tanks, right? And these Brig this Brigitta, it's it's so easy to get the damage value. Yeah, at Hanpei, I, I mean... Yeah, the Fuki has just been doing nasty things to him, especially because, again, T-Sorcerer is getting so much time up top. Nicely done, taking out Naru to begin with, and then the barrage actually just started from a little bit too high, maybe? Not 100% sure about that one. Trade's coming all the way through. Yezin taking up this res again. T-Sorcerer putting that one on cooldown. Teemo getting very aggressive, instantly stunned, bashed, whole lot of damage against him, avoided, has stabilized. Yeah, and I really think that they've been able to deal with Teemo a lot better now. The Brigitte is ready. They're coordinating their halt and then the stun. Of course, they're now playing something that can actually double uh, 
disable the Wrecking Ball on the other side was before they were running to Winston. So uh, that's something that helped them out a lot. The extra boops from Ball, the halts from Mini Me, and then the Steel Bash from Hempe. That's usually enough to get that ball kill. The, the coordination always going to be the name of the game on this one. T Source are falling a little bit early. Yezen is getting chased down afterwards. And I think just like that, main source of damage, main source of healing gone, avoided his losses. Eli, There's still luck coming out from down. Lightbringer. Yeah, they, 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 it's, it's still coming out. Tractor, yeah, Tractor Kid does tank out Zytor, so they're only going to be relying on Lucio for heals, but unless there's something sneaky in the back, yeah, it, it's just hard yeah. to do when your main your main healer and your main source of damage down, right? It, it, it really, it really, uh, it really helps in that case to, to have more on the field. I do think that with all these ultimates that they're going to have coming up, this will be an explosive fight. It's only Zytor that will be nowhere near, but everyone else wow. is going to have it at some point. So 5v6 in ultimates, and oh. there's a beautiful EMP on the pharmacy. Teleport up top, give an EMP to both of them. That's a nasty present. Naru trying to get more damage in. T-Sorcerer, the only one who fell in the initial strike here, but so Naru's going to have that Diva Bomb. If he gets that pool shot over, we will see. He definitely knows exactly where the members of Avoided are. I do believe we have T-Sorcerer back with the rest of the team now. Yeah, and Yezen up top, continuing on with that. Here comes the Diva Bomb! Getting out T-Sorcerer again, Stunaro just absolutely fighting this one, and Fuki continuing to do Fuki things. Yeah, I'm uh, very impressed so far with what Fuki has been able to put out on that Tracer. We know it can be hard to get value sometimes, but Fuki doesn't seem to have any trouble with that one. One minute to go. There's still so many tools online for avoiding. They just haven't been able to get in and actually use them. But with this early pick on El Eli, I do think they have a nice opening to get going. They just need to not get caught out in the back line. Yeah, Hanpei, the only one nowhere near that after the rally invested the last team fight. Oh, no. Now Timo's here. The seismic slam down and Lightbringer just gets absolutely deleted there after a nice combination from our ball player. Tractor Kid taking out his team or his counterpart excuse me on that the lightbringer now res back up this is a six to five advantage avoided admiral raptor falling as well zytor done that's the healing core but we have reached our next we have a little bit more time on the clock here in mana class yeah and they even got the uh they got the translocator from ellie eli in that in the middle of that with uh, with the rocket and that's always nice if you don't know where the sombra is you see your translocator at least you know she won't be able to teleport away when you do find her and uh, Eli is now behind them, goes into that uh, into that spawn area, the previous spawn area, and now point three, 135. This is going to be a close one, but with the ultimates that's left for Roar, this first fight shouldn't be. From Zytor Coalescence to start with, they have two, three more on board. Excuse me, Fuki trying to get in the back, but gets a lot of damage against the members of Avoided, trying to get back T Source for Guardian Angel, Guardian Angeling, using the Guardian Angel ability to get back there. But not going to be fast enough. Pack against Tractor Kid, not rolling around for the time being. Cruise stopped on that one minute. Left on here is members of Furry Sports looking like they're just kind of trying to get together. Wait, that looked like a stick. Uh, maybe I don't know I think, my tracer play, excuse me. Yeah. I, I, think, I think they got on the shield and then you can drop it. You can drop it from the shield. Uh, but Teemo and Fuki yep, yep, yep. still again the follow up here. Get the 4k together. 5k for Teemo. And that is just a cleanup team kill. Nicely done. The Tracer and the ball combining for all the last hits there. 50-50. Nice uh, balanced trade. But this is where Roar is going to get uh, get a, a little bit scared. Because there will be four ultimates on, online on the side of Avoided soon. 30 seconds left. This is really the fight that it's all about. It's going to be the last fight territory. No more chances after this. And will they get an overtime or will they lose the series? That's Avoided's question. They got lose that first two. No. Naru, nice diva bomb. They only have 15 seconds left. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough for avoided. They lost the first one. This is a rock and hard place, and they have no more time left. Two ultimates on board, but not sure if Lightbringer and Yezen are going to be able to use those ones. Tractor now has its sorcerer close. Five seconds to go. Nobody there quite yet. Has gotten the contestant, so there should be a little bit of overtime contestion. Timo over the side, getting those two-sided sources of damage again. Fuki there, Fuki's got the bomb. Hanpei falling to well-placed melee from Timo so far. Eli down to so five to five as T-Sword falls. The healing core from the side of Rory Sports gone, or from Avoided gone, excuse me. And just like that, Yezin and more trying to get something going, trying to overpower with the damage. They have gotten it. Yezin getting so low and Avoided getting a lot closer, but Fuki giving the attention that's needed. A lot of players from the side of Roar gonna be on the respawn. Four meters away, Contest comes through, Fuki there. 
Gonna buy time for the rest of the team to get there. Eli very close to this EMP, but gets damaged and forced to come back from this one. Only 50, the hack comes through for this. No, it doesn't, doesn't hack the small health pack, that's okay. EMP there. There's the hack. The vast majority of the side of Avoided and 3.97 meters away. I think this might be the deciding factor. Tractor Kid sneaks not one, but two as the minefield comes out. Lightbringer gets the eye tour. A lot of members on the side have avoided, and they have the manpower to get through here. Teemo deleted, only Lucio back, and that's it. Three meters away, two meters away, and they take it. We have a one-to-one oh, -one no. series on our hands. <sighs> oh, avoided. Kiki gets so close. And they, but that EMP come out, I was like, okay, there's got to be people that die now. But luckily, Ball was already rolling, was already getting those double kills, and there was just not enough damage left to really stave them off. They almost got off the cart when they really shouldn't have, but that was so close, very nicely done from Avoided to get that back. And now that we're going into map three, gonna go to Route 66, and I think that's really not just the map, but it's truly gonna be the Wild West. We really don't know what's gonna happen. It's incredibly close between these teams, and Roar is really prepared for this. They've always been more of a dive-oriented team anyways, and being able to play that against an avoided team that's so susceptible to it sometimes but it can also play it themselves so well it's a really nice balance of chaos versus coordinated play versus just everything really and creativity as well because you saw you saw what Roar did every now and then they just get a they get a backline pick sometimes they focus on the front line they always switch it up and avoided is actually trying to keep up with them sometimes rather than Roar keeping up with avoided which is what we often see when teams play against them yeah i'm with it i'm with it uh, shout out to fuki there he's doing everything that he could and eli everything. as well you yeah. know a really really great emp and I am just in awe that Avoida was able to live through that. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. especially given what EMP does to individual characters like Ball, really, really surprised and, and impressed, honestly. Fantastic job from Avoida. They came through here, tied it up, now 1-1. One, one. They're back at that even playing field, man, of class. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to gonna be a very good one. We're going to be seeing, like you said, Route 66. Uh, I don't know. Like, I really don't know what's going to happen here. Like, is Avoided going to switch something up? Are they going to change anything about their team comp? I don't think so. I think Avoided's team comp will still work. I think, you know, the, the players they have in, it will still work. They might change up something in the support line. They might play either Brigitte, the Ana, or maybe even a Baptiste on Hempe. I think Hempe is a very flexible player in that sense. It's a great addition to that squad. Uh, used to be on no commitments and then, you know, swapped over to Avoided to, uh, you know, scratch that one trick itch a little bit more, maybe. Just have, uh, have fun with it. And uh, on Roar, I don't know, like you said, it's been great for Fuki. It's been great for for Eli. Timo has been doing great on the ball. Cannot quite match the same value that Ball himself is getting, Tractor Kid. Because uh, they are, of course, that ball specialist that everyone knows and loves. But Naru on the Diva shutting down Yezin all the time. Yes. Yezin still getting a lot of value when Naru just cannot be looking all the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of that will be coming at you very soon because we have to go to a little bit of a break. Don't worry, we're not going anywhere. We'll be right back with you with more of this action because these people cannot be stopped. And I do think we just need a breather, a little bit of hydration. So get some snacks and we'll be right back at you.
and we are back, Overwatch fans, here with day number two of Monkey Bubbles Contenders Trials for the EU region. FBI Tugboat here, and Mana Class casting with me, and Sinza down there producing away, making our job just so much easier. Doing very well, and we appreciate it. Route 66 now, between Roar and Avoided after we saw the tie-up. 2-0 on Elios for the side of Roar Esports. 3-2 for yep. the side of Avoided against Roar Esports on the Blizzard world, and now we got the Route 66 tiebreaker. Yeah, and I'm so excited for this one because Escort is always that map type that relies on momentum and push through. And sometimes you cannot break the momentum that the defense is setting up. And it, so far, both of these teams have just been neck and neck. It's been so incredibly close. So this it could really go everywhere. It all depends on how much value they're getting on all their picks, how much uh, value they're getting on their certain strategy executes. Like, And, and all of it is really going to rely on what is going to happen with Fuki? Is they going to get the same value? Uh, is Lightbringer going to get the same value on his Torbjorn and going to get slot, shut down a little bit more? Uh, how is Yez the Yeza Naru uh, matchup going with that Pharmacy Diva, which is likely still going to happen? And there's so many question marks in that case. We will see the defense once again be avoided first. Roar is going to start on the attack. And they haven't switched anything up, everything out. No, avoid it. Going to do the same thing. We expect that from them. But there might be some changes coming out from Roar depending on whether they're on attack or defense because we have seen them swap up either to a Sombra or to a Genji sometimes. You know, they, they have some flexibility in uh, how they deal with it. But those tanks and DPS have been, the support's been the same. Yeah, so yeah, Eli has been the only one who's really switched, right? Zytor's been playing the Moira pretty much exclusively, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. Fuki so now on the Widowmaker stuff. to start out. I think that's there a nice pick just to get maybe some opening picks. I don't think they're going to stick on it though. Because Widowmaker gets shut down hard by this divey uh, composition. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say it's the momentary switch on the Anna to try and assist the sniper shots. Gets uh, you know a, a lead up body shot, maybe a shot from the Anna for an early pick, but not gonna happen. It's so easy, like you were saying. Eli over here on the Sombra. I was going to. Uh... I'm sorry. What'd you say? I think uh, I think what we're gonna see here is that this high ground defense is just gonna keep on going here. Um, we will be uh, seeing a little bit of a Lightbringer kill on the Admiral Raptor. Roar is trying to get some more point progress, but they do lose that main healer. In that case, Zyter also under a lot of pressure here, almost going down. It will be the hack on the tractor kit to get more going tugboat. Yeah, the super mobile, super divey composition for the side of Team Avoided is going to continue to roll across this. I, I mean, they have no shields available. I, I really, really think that the D.Va ball composition that uh, Rory Sports is running on Blizzard World is it really, really did work. Might be a different story on Route 66, though. Big Girl is the place to be. Lightbringer getting a nasty hack against him, almost getting taken down here, but the healers to the side of Avoided doing a great job. Yezen. And just absolutely knocked out of the sky here by Fuki. Uh, Fuki and Naru both, both members. We talked about Naru a lot. Fuki's also been doing a great job of maintaining sightlines of this Pharah up top and making sure they're not going to be too, too much available for Yazan. Lightbringer, tractor, the uh, turret not going to be available for the next this one, and the T Source does fall. Naru is just running all over this one, getting a little bit of damage against everybody. A lot of ultimates on board for Avoided, though. Yeah, a lot of ultimates online for Avoided indeed, but so do Roar have quite a few coming up. They're almost at the full six with Admiral Raptor lagging behind a little bit, almost at 80% here. So uh, yeah, it will be a ultimate fiesta as we call it on Route 66, but there will be a late kill on the Lightbringer. So this defense has to set up a little bit slower than they might want to. Yeah, so this is uh, this is two, two teams fighting very, very far away from this point. Uh, but I guess that just goes to show for the versatility of Overwatch, right? Um, yeah. Are these avoided members trying to come back? Oh, okay, no, excuse me. They're not coming back. They're just maintaining this so that Fuki and Eli do not get that. Hanpei had, it looks like Hanpei had the shield up, but the res is going to come through and negate out that tracer stick. And this team fight will still continue on 6 2 6. A lot of advantage, a lot of progress has, has happened for Marie Sports in the past 20 30 seconds or so. We have a lot of glowing ultimates on board. That's first now a Tractor Kids minefield. Timo is going to. They have to be forced to rotate on around here and look for a different place to put his own minefield. The pharmacy combination still up top. Those two, no, excuse me, the pharma, the uh, Farah, the Yezen, and the Minimi uh, Supercharger are going to be the only two of, uh, ultimates available for or Avoided right now, though. Yeah, so far Avoided uh, doing good on the second point defense. They've had to expend some ultimates, and Roar once again wisely holding on to theirs. Still have four in the bank. And uh, yeah, Avoided is going to be ready to deal with those. Fuki now with the Pulse Bomb, though, uncharacteristically. 
70% will have it within a matter of seconds if I know anything about Buki's Tracer. Now, Zytor on the Moira as well, especially with this flash healing, can really get ultimate very, very quickly. This is not a Roar Esports team that is, away f uh, that is very far away from a full six man class. What we're looking at, Mini Me, now, investing that supercharger. But actually, that angle is going to mean that only a couple different members get that. Here's a huge EMP for members as a sound barrier invested for the side of Roar Esports. That's going to lead to a couple different players that are absolutely able to go to town here. Eli actually getting mobbed out from Lightbringer. Fuki revenging his team on that. The stick comes out and Lightbringer walks back over it. Did not connect the stick, but the uh, tra this, the, the tracer bomb turned into a mine field for a, or for a, turned into a mine of sorts for a couple seconds. It's going to be the one that finds value. A lot of back and forth on point. Naru goes for the pool shot diva bomb. Not gonna find anything. Hampei does fall to one of the minefields. Just ended up walking through that one. Timo instantly avenged out. Mini Me taking him out for the time being. A lot of members down for avoided. I think that Rory Esports has won this one. Yeah, Rory Esports looks like they're just gonna complete this one. They already took down Tractor Kit and Mini Me on the tank line. Lightbringer still around, but will not throw out the ultimate. They know this fight's lost. Just buying some time. With three and a half minutes, they're gonna go into this third point, try and complete that. And this is the one. It's once again one of those things at the end of the map on both hybrid and escort. This is the one where if you get held anywhere, it's going to be here. Yeah, then uh, we talked about important corners last time on Blizzard World. This Rusty 66 last official corner is going to be another huge one where a lot of players will fall. A lot of ultimates available for the side of Avoided. Minimi is working his way up to his as Fuki is the only one. Uh, really that has that one. And Admiral will have his sound here soon, but that's only a defensive one. Fuki out, Whoa. doesn't find anything on that one as Rory Esports again finds himself ultimate list. Fuki falling here. The Torb turret getting those instant accurate shots off. A lot of back and forth here. Is look these, looks like these two teams are trying to feel each other out through this chokehold. And this will be relatively the weakest point for the composition of Avoided. There's less sidelines, there's no skybox, so Yezin and Lightbringer, generally speaking, should get a little less value from their uh, from their picks. There's a lot more places to hide. And then Naru can counter that power a bit easier. But so far, not necessarily has been the case. There goes Yezin, though, finally taken out. Naru getting up top. Yezin no longer here. The res comes through and is finished. Nicely done. T -Sor Sorcerer finishes out, even though Naru is there giving damage and flak continuously. There's the EMP. Four members of Avoided Affected on that one again. I think the Rory Esports is in a fantastic position. Damage orb out for Zytor. Now we're looking at him. Last little bit of damage. Yezin falling on that one. A lot of Avoided members. So what is going on? If it seems like Eli gets this EMP and that's just a sign for every member of Avoided Esports to throw balls to the wall and just go absolutely all the gas out the tank and take picks left and right. It's like they don't need ability to take their picks. I don't get it. I mean, you know, you have just primary shots. That's how that works, right? Like primary fire is definitely a, uh, a hard, uh, hard thing. But we will see now over here that Roar has some ultimates coming up. Eli switching over to the Genji, thinks that we'll get more value here. Cassandra harder to hide with her in this uh, enclosed space. Who is looking for that pulse bomb? Has it almost ready? Once again, there, Yazin getting up close, and Eli actually coming out with a finishing kill on that one. Well placed headshot. Yeah, that's Eli. I think it's safe to say he's getting a little bit more value on the Genji than the Sombra already, Mana Class. Yeah, you just saw in the past a few targets of Avoided being able to get away on like a sliver of HP. And that Genji, both the left right, left and right click as well as the dash, just able to help out with the finishes on those. So Eli just now ready, will always be in position to do those dashes, do those finishers. And now we're going to see, get do the Rally, the Barrage, and Lightbringer's ultimate get some value. Well, at least the headshots do. Wow, yeah, Lightbringer nicely done. A uh, little Torb snipe on there does anybody's soul good, man. Here comes the Diva self-destruct. Not gonna find anything on that. It's just Buki and Eli going to town the back lines of Team Avoided. Yezin again with that limited skybox, that lower roof. Not gonna have the same ability that they heard earlier. Teemo and the, D the DPS core of the side of Team Roar Esports. Gonna find that one. The res coming through. t Sorcerer really has not been contested on those so far. As now here's an offensive sound barrier again to try and keep this push alive for Roar. 15 seconds away, two players on, no contest come through. Now a player touches for a second, four meters away. There's a blade, Eli goes off the first, but isn't able to live through it. Barrage on the end, Yezden does not live through that one either. 
does it, oh, excuse me, Yezen does live on that one, excuse me. Eli actually now switching on over to the Doom Fist. Admiral, Teemo, both down. Roar Esports at a huge deficit now, fighting this one 3-2-6 with no ultimates on board. Avoided has stopped them. They did it. Avoided once again, just before the payload gets to the end, they do stop them. So it's the exact same situation we had on Blizzard World. But it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be very different, I'd say, for, um, uh, for for this map because there's no point that needs to be unlocked. Avoided can straight away go into that, um, go into that offensive, more open space momentum mode, and that might play well into their favor. But it might also give Roar an opportunity to stop that momentum sooner and more often. Uh, than they were able to do on Blizzard World. So we'll see if they make any changes on the defense. I do think the Eli Genji switch definitely was interesting and it did a lot of work uh, for a little bit, but maybe they'll just go back on the Sombra on the defense just so they can hack some health packs, right? Because not just hacking the enemy team, but also hacking certain health packs that the Teemo is able to retreat to more often than then Ball cannot use for avoid it, uh, might be very helpful for it. It might be a good thing. And if we see this come out from Lightbringer, I'm going to be excited. Because Lightbringer, the Torb one trick that plays main tank sometimes, going on to Genji? Hey, yeah. That would be quite something. I don't think it's going to happen. I like, does switch back to, to Torbjorn. But I like that they do the Jabate. See, casters always say like, oh, we got debated again, but secretly we love it, Tugboat, don't we? We do, we do. We, we do love the little uh, little player caster interactions yeah. that do come through here, and they know what they're doing. They know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, it looks, and that's the thing, right? You know that the players know what you're doing, so there is that communication interaction thing going on. That's what you love, being part of that community. And now the aggression is stayed away there from Aurora. They're going Ooh. to spawn cam the mirror. So Zytor almost getting concussive blast off by the Yezin up top. Uh, just pulled out that... Uh, yeah, pulled out that fade really just in the nick of time. A lot of kills, a lot of kills coming out from Rory Esports first. Zytor going to be the only one. Does end up getting booped off on this one, so not able to avoid the environmental kill on that, environmental death on that. This is, uh, yeah, now Rory Esports is in a decent little position to start pushing payload. Oh, you can just see that Fuki. You get so much old charges of that Wrecking Ball of Tractor Kid. It's just insane how much value they're getting there. Fuki will uh, be again up to 60% of the ultimate charge there. Uh, Yezin is keeping up with that actually on the far. It also does a lot of damage here. Yeah, yeah. Yezin's no, no, uh, no stranger to large amounts of burst damage. Doesn't have the barrage on board quite yet, but does have the D.Va deleted. So that really is the first step to this one if they're looking to stick this one out with a barrage. Not sure if that's needed. Lightspringer is going to be the only one who has gotten deleted. Zytor did take out Key Sorcerer there at the end, as well as mini me So Eli cleaning this one up against Yezin as well. And I think this is Roar that is stabilized now at this point. Now, yeah, Ball is still trying to get some value here. They did get a lot of picks late, which means that... Void it can probably come in, come in here with a numbers advantage. Just go aggro. Here, another health pack being hacked by Eli. I think it's the one in the tunnel. And uh, Lightbringer already in an aggressive position. The turret gets taken out, but there will be an attack coming out from Avoid it a little bit sooner than Roar might want. Avoid it has a lot of ultimates with which to do it as well. Here comes the Torp one first. Teemo falling. A lot of damage coordinated between Tractor Kid and Lightbringer on that one. Naro taking out Lightbringer there towards the end. No turret to boot as well. Eli trying to get all the way around, but first things first, the hack, the health packs coming in first, and again gets signaled out by this one. Avoided doing a great job. I mean, there's only so much that that, uh, that Asombra can do when you're looking at a team like Avoided that just comes around, just covers so much surface area. You're going to get detected yeah. more times than not, it feels like. And talking about surface area, we'll see that minefield from Ball coming out pretty soon. We'll be ready with that one. That's going to be hard to contest that objective. They're going to swing in, throw it around that point, and just make sure it's going to get all the value. You see him waiting for it. Timo now here. Sound bigger out, but only connect to two other members. That's Naro and Timo, the tanks for the side of Rory Esports. The advantage from that one, now it's gone. Hampe falling first. No rally to be had in the next little bit. And Fuki and Zaito are actually coming out going on a little bit here. Self-destruct over the top. And that one actually ends pretty quickly, but does not take out any members of Team Avoided. Mini Me falling afterwards from Fuki and course of damage from Admirable. Or Admiral, excuse me. And I do believe the team of Avoid is forced to back off a little bit. That was so strange. I was fully expecting Ball to come out with the minefield and deny them that point entrance. But the cart was just free. No mines came out. And I, I don't really know why. But at least they'll have them the for this for fight. Yeah, that's yeah. like a thing. Yeah. Stack them all the way up? Is that what it is? Maybe. 
Maybe. I don't think they needed to, though. But we'll see this fight come out. They'll have the ultimates. Barrage needs to get value here. Beautiful EMP, though, from Eli. Eli. Mini-Me with perfect timing on that one to stay alive through the stick. But Zytor down the main healer for the side of Rory Esports. Gone. Avoided. Gonna have a little bit of work cut out for them as the minefield does take out Naru on the Baby Diva status. This is Yeza just absolutely chasing down this Lucio and doing a fantastic yeah. job of wall riding, getting away from that one. And now Avoid has bought themselves a little bit more time. Yeah, two minutes 40 to get it to get it to second, and then another minute and a half if they manage to do that, add it to their clock to get the third. And it's still a tough ask. A lot of time bought there for Roar to deny them that first oh, point. So Still gets Sorcerer, away. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, still dies to Fuki, yeah. but wow. Just getting away with that Guardian Angel, right? Like we talk about Mercy's getting away being slippery all the time, but that's the true testament there. T Source has been doing so great on that one today. Yeah, if you have a tracer that can take you down from down low frequently, then uh, you're just gonna have a tough time getting away. Guardian Angel is not as uh just not as advantageous as it used to be, we'll say. UK actually running over a little bit of this tour of ultimate, but able to get away from that one. We've seen Lightbringer, he's able to nail headshots and more on these. So really, UK is giving him the yardage, you know, the distance that he's really earned so far in this point. Trades coming through, five to five on this, self-destruct coming out. Everybody able to get away from that one though. Lightbringer and Zaitu are not gonna see the end of this team fight though. As we see four on the side, four team avoided. Supercharger out, but again, this is hurting my head, I don't understand. There's all these times, you know, there's like the Sombra ultimate. It, uh, like on paper, this EMP should equal out to a lot of voided members dying. Mini-Me drops the Supercharger. On paper, this should equal out to a lot of damage against Team Esports, but they just hear this come out and they just get super aggressive and takes picks of their own. Love to see it. A lot to be said for momentum flips. Zytor now with the Cold Weapons here. You yep. go down. <laughs> Not able to get away from this one again, and Zytor doing a fantastic job getting both healing and damage off. Admiral falling there towards the end. He hasn't getting those blasts from this ferret yet again. t are doing exactly what he needs to while he is still alive, of course. Campe involving that rally into this team fight, and now that's over with, but a few different members do have that extra healing. Uh, the shield pack's no longer able to provide post-fight armor capabilities, but the rally, of course, does. I think I said that right. Uh, I honestly do think that right now Avoid is going to be sweating a little bit because, yes, they have a few ultimates ready, but so does Roar. You were talking about Lightbringer earlier that they're able to hit the headshots. I have talked to a fair few Torb mains or Torb one tricks in the in the past, and all they always say is if you really want to get good at Torb, you got to master that gun. You're going to be able to hit headshots like Hanzo's do. And if you're able to do that, then Torb Yarn is scary. So scary. He's got more. He's got more health. He's got armor pick capabilities, uh, and he doesn't have to pull a bow, right? Yep. Oh, Timu falling to his counterpart in this one. Tractor kid on the ball, finding one from this Lightbringer, getting this one sprayed everywhere, getting damage all over points. Self destruct coming out, but Naro has not found value in his self destruct. In at least four or five ultimates. Another minute and a half plus purchased here for the side of Team Avoided. And we are still on a roll. We are still having a game here, Mana Class. And they're able to use that Molten Core in order to buy space around the payload to push it in. Because Roar kind of, I wouldn't say they gave that up, but they were forced away from the objective. Which is always a, uh, say a bad thing, but always a tricky thing when that happens. So, uh, yeah, there we go in with another minefield from Teemo. Eli getting one. There's the barrage from the top. Admiral being the first to fall from that one. But this is fighting decently even. Never mind. Two down for the side of Roar. Couple gone. Yes, and T Sorcerer. No pharmacy combination up top for the time being. Lightbringer runs out of ammo on the last shot. And that is heartbreaking. I've been there before, my friend. Tractor Kid now getting back into the thick of things here and chasing down his opposing ball. Utilizing that shield ability just at the last second. And again, Tractor Kid not able to. Chase down that one, the member with who gets very, very low, able to get away from this one. Yeah, they always say it, never chase the ball because you'll never catch them, and Timo kind of showing that off there. <laughs> we'll not be able to use this truck health pack. Of course, it's been hacked again. Eli's been doing a great job of hacking those. You see how much that comes into play, and there's a sound barrier for the defense, but will that be enough against this minefield? Not for Timo, not for Admiral, and not for Zytor if he doesn't get away from this. Nicely done with the stick on there, and now we have taken it with time! Nicely done! Oh. Avoided gets done. in there, stays on, and takes out the Nora members who are foolish enough to try and get on top of that one uh, without, you know, first Once again. No healing, without visiting all healing core. Just stacking, like the, the perfect stacking of first the minefield, then the molten core to deny so much space around that card. It gets to roll free to the end of that map, and Avoided takes it away, and Roar 
so close to winning that out. There was so so little time left, and that last play with that mindful that uh, and that molten core actually got the play of the game as well. It's just been such a roller coaster this series. And Avoid it does come out on top again, but man, did Roar make it close? They're a team to watch because they were so ready for that. Yeah, uh, if Roar had pushed that all the way in the end then we might still be watching this match given that Avoided only had like 13 seconds left, right? I think they yeah. had another like eight meters or so to go uh, so after close. that. Uh, and, and I do think that, that Roar would have been able to get there and contest you know, if yeah. they had taken it, but that's just a different story. You gotta, you know, uh, it, you know it's about steps in Overwatch, right? You gotta take the point yeah. and move on to defense and see how these things go afterwards. Uh, a very, very, so. very hard fought match. Yes, 2-0 on the Elios, but I, I know that the first one was 99-99. The second one did have progress for the losing team that was avoided, but still, uh, fantastic stuff. Do you believe we have a uh, main tank player lined up for interview? Oh yeah, we do. Mini Me is going to be ready in the chat very soon, so we'll get that going. But before we do, once again, reminding everybody that if you've seen some great plays, if you think you can make some great content based off on this production, feel free to do so. We've got a jersey with the Ellie Gladiators to give away, as well as two homestand sprays. Uh, like spray kits spray codes mm -hmm. so uh if you can make anything like a picture a video some form of content in order to get that ball rolling to get potentially a uh, uh well a, like a jersey or a spray code yeah, yeah. feel free to put that on twitter use the hashtag glad for t2 so that's glad as in gladiators four as in you know four f-o-r just the word and t2 the letter t the number two and you'll be able to uh, be eligible for that we'll be drawing the winners from that one or selecting the winners from that one on friday after the after the last game has been broadcasted so we will now go to the interview with mini me we'll just drag him into the chat and welcome mini me to this uh, interview thank you for doing this for us and of course congratulations on the win thank you yeah, a hard so, uh, one if there ever was one, right? Yeah, it was <laughs> honestly the easiest match of my life. Don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Wow. <laughs> nah, took the side of us. Oh, my heart is beating. It's insane. <laughs> we gotcha. can imagine. Yeah, so, yeah. like, at, at, at that uh, at that point, because, of course, they took Ilios away from you guys. Uh, were you at all getting worried, like, oh, we might not even be able to win this series? Like, what happened in there? Because, obviously, you swap out... Uh, Toddy for uh, for you, and then you switch the like, Glidebringer back to DPS, which is sort of a move you can kind of expect to be happening. Um, but but like, what was what was it going on in the comms after that, where you're like, oh, we actually lost the map. What's this? Uh, so to start off, like we had some major internet issues today, so we had some oh. players on insanely high ping, and we were kind of worried about the match. Um, mm -hmm. And when we went on Ilios, it was like the the moment where we were like, okay, we gotta give our 100 percent if not even 200 percent and go full tryout on them and mm -hmm. yeah we just swapped to what we know we want to play on this map like we planned yeah. on playing this so we just ran it we knew they were gonna run dive like hard dive every single map so we just had humper on the on the brig and just uh, shield him every time he just shield dances and tries to stay alive and if he stays, stays alive we win the team fight pretty much Fair enough. There you you did, see, uh, did see a lot of focus going on a Hempe there from uh, from Fuki, especially. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, they, they recognize that as well on the other side. Uh, like you said, you were expecting dive. Were you expecting you know, specifically like the Sombra dive as well? Or did you think they were maybe going to go with like a Genji or something? Uh, we didn't really expect dive like before the match. Mm -hmm. We don't really know anything about most teams. We just watched the, the matches that I played before that day. Mm -hmm. And we saw them run like the, the normal boring meta comp. We assumed they would run it, but like on Elios, they came out with the hard dive. So we knew, okay, they're going to keep on running this dive. Like they talked probably to the coaches and we're yeah. like, okay, you guys got to play this. Uh, Otherwise you won't win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just, we know how to adapt in most situations. We know how to play against most comps. Mm -hmm. And it worked out. It was probably the, 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 like the closest match of my life. And <laughs> yeah, it ended up working out for us. Yeah, I was going to say, because you've been in quite a few matches with uh, in your days. Um, of course, you've been, you, you, you were one of those original Clockwork Vendetta players. Now you're on Avoided. Uh, has that been a very similar environment for you to play in where, with like the, the mentality of the team? I feel like it's kind of similar, but in on the other hand, it's completely different. Like the team playstyle wise is kind of similar because we all play our, our own thing and we mm -hmm. just know what to go at and we know what to do in yeah. most situations. But on the other hand, like the team structure is completely new. Like we have 
an NA part of the team. We have EU, we have like a giant community around our Discord and like just people yeah. having a good time talking with each other. And that wasn't okay. really the case with CV back then. So oh, it's... Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> It's just um, a great environment. Just we are sitting in Discord together and talking about like spots where Lightbringer can sit on Monkey like at 3 a.m. yesterday or today, I guess. And just <laughs> talk about all kinds of strats we want to try out. I was just going to say high level players, you know, really uh, playing to the best of their abilities on these individual heroes, meta be damned, right? That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, we just yep. don't want to play meta. Like, what I've watched a couple of other games, it's just the most boring thing ever, just seeing double shield versus double shield, and yeah. you just throw the dynamite, use the lamp, it's just so boring to watch. Can't disagree. Can't disagree. Yeah. It's uh, it, it all has their uh, it, it all has their charm, but I do definitely uh, understand how people have uh, have more of a, a, a liking for these diverse or more crazy strategies that we see yeah. come out sometimes. Um, so yeah, you're saying the team environment is very different. You have like a whole like community behind you that you're all playing and talking to get uh, to each other about. Um, of course, you've you've played with uh, uh, with Engineer before, you know, on the uh, on on the tour. Bjorn is Lightbringer a very different tour player? Or is that just you know? The same they're, kind of uh, craziness. They're ex extremely different. Like I feel like um, Light is just on the flank 24-7 pretty much. Mm -hmm. He just knows how far he can go and he knows how to bait people with his abilities. Mm -hmm. And Engineer was, I think, a bit a bit more straightforward. He just played with the team and fragged out and yeah, had amazing ults back then. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, it's it's good good to know that Torp can be played in different ways as well, yeah. and that you've experienced both now. Um, because yeah, that that of course plays into the whole thing of like we play our heroes to the best of their capacity, and then knowing how far you can go with a hero, knowing how flexible a hero is in different areas, that's always good to hear. Um, do you do you think we'll ever see Lightbringer actually play the Genji? Because he, he teased it in spawn, and of course that was Jubei. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm pretty we sure we heard he that you're learned. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's kind of garbage on the Genji. I don't know. I've never seen him play Genji before. Like he's. I mean, hey, he's you know, man, we, we, your we, we heard yesterday yeah. that you were going to try and, and and like maybe learn some new hero. I was like hopeful, like, maybe we'll like bring a Genji one day. But yeah, there's a ton of people that think he's just a top on Rick. But like before, he used to play yeah. Monkey on the team. He used to play mm -hmm. um like Baptiste on the team. Like he played a couple of different heroes, and he yeah. knows all of them pretty well. So people just didn't expect the Monkey in the first match, I guess. No, I can I, I can see that. Um, so, like looking at your next games, do you do you think this was the hardest team in the group to beat? I think the hardest team is going to be Sheer Cold. If I'm okay. going to be honest, we'll see like how they can adapt against us. Fair if they're going to come uh, out with the hard death as well, we'll see. But yeah. well, I mean, after this game, watching this, they might uh, might feel like that would be the option to go, right? But then maybe yeah, but they don't execute the thing as is, well. We know how to play against it now, so we should be fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you're, uh, gonna, you're also going to watch the fight back and yeah. do the same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Before the entire tournament, I thought that ultimates are going to be the strongest met, uh, strongest team mm -hmm. because like they have mm -hmm. huge names on there, and yeah. also my former yeah. teammate Magmata. Yeah. But the performances has been kind of weird right now. I don't know if they're like struggling with the meta or whatever, but I think they're, they've lost both matches so far. Which is uh, kind of sad to watch. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think they, they to watch. lost today as well. Uh, yeah. But yeah, maybe they can come back. Who, who knows? It's like, I really love this this format of the trials now. Like, okay. last season they had, I think, this tournament, or like this elimination bracket, mm -hmm. which cracks, I really yeah, don't yeah, like because you, like, you rely yeah. on seeding and now you actually have to play against every single team, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and of course, top two of the group uh, group go through the contenders. Then, and of course, yeah. since everything is now monthly, you only have to wait a few more weeks before you get to go trials again. Yeah, um, so. yeah it's a, in general, I hear you say you like the new format a lot, which is always good to uh, good to see that uh, the format is evolving to something that players actually like. Uh, yeah. Do you think the first to two format is also nice, or would you like to have a bit longer games? I was extremely surprised by it. Like, I just heard about it. I think four days ago. Mm -hmm. I realized that it's uh, it's first to two, which is kind of weird. I don't know who decided mm -hmm. it, but I, I guess it worked out, out fast so far. And yeah, it's going to be interesting, like the next few matches. Yeah, 100%. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to your next games as well. Um, is there anything in particular that, you know, um, you guys have as, as like maybe like a team ritual, something you do before the game where you're like, oh, we'll all listen to the same song or someone comes up with a stupid joke or something? Uh, 
usually we just hang out in Discord and talk about different stuff, different stuff we want to play. And we we make fun of Humpus' mother. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I guess I guess that's the ritual, you know. <laughs> There's no joke it. about yeah, having it's, like, yeah. it's like our ritual, I guess. <laughs> no, like okay. we we just okay. we just hang out in Discord and have fun there yeah, and just talk with each yeah. other. That's all, pretty much. Cool. Yeah, and, and you're you're still. Uh, I guess you still have fun with the game, obviously, because we've seen a lot of yeah. te a lot of teams, a lot of players uh, really get burnt out during the last uh, last months with the hero bands. Now that they're gone. You especially will also like was that was that like a hard period to get through for you guys when like sometimes certain heroes would get banned that you played a lot or do you feel like the bands kind of dodged you guys as a team quite well? Uh, we had like a pretty huge roster back then when the bands mm -hmm. were thing in OD, so we never really struggled with it. We just subbed a new player in that we knew okay he's gonna do well. Like for example, when we uh, when Ball got banned, we just got um, KSA in for example for a few scrims. Yeah. KSA on the Hog and uh, <laughs> I think it was Trust Me on Hog in a match as well. So that yeah. was pretty, so we just had like a plan for every single band pretty much. That wasn't really an issue. Good to see. Yeah, and but of I'm, course I'm you don't happy. have to worry about bands anymore. So Yeah, I'm happy yeah. that bands are gone. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I think we all are. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I think they had some nice nice ring to it, but it was just a weird system. Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna let you go in a little bit, but before that, we're gonna give you the opportunity to shout out, plug, and do whatever you really want. Uh, can people find more of you, of your team? Uh, how does that really work? Is there anyone you want to particularly thank or not thank? Uh, a shout out to Che, our manager. She's amazing. She does everything for us, pretty much like warm up scrims and in general just scrims and yeah. gets the team together and also. Yeeson, who is a monster on Pharah. Like, he might actually be the best Pharah in the world. It's actually insane. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, and in general, just... Yeah, or Discord, everyone who supports us and all our fans out there. It's, it's avoided GG, right? On uh, on Twitter, where they can find more about you guys? Yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I can, and I can, I can attest to uh, to Jada being, uh, <laughs> to be, being a good manager. I mean, I live, I live in the same city, so, you know, we, we hang out yeah. sometimes. But, yeah, oh, okay, cool, it's... Cool. Uh, it's re it's really nice that uh, that you guys have such a good bond with your manager as well. It's always good to see that behind the scenes the staff is doing their work as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, thank you for the interview. Congratulations on the win again, and uh, also good luck in prepping for the next matches, especially the ones against Sheer Cold. Apparently. Yep. It's gonna be a hard match. <laughs> gonna be a hard one. Well, thank you very much again, and okay. uh, yeah, we'll see you uh, see you next time maybe. <laughs> yep. Bye bye. Bye bye. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. That was Minimi of Team Avoided coming through for the post game W interview. Two to one, taken down over Roar Esports. Fantastic stuff from them. Always a pleasure, really, talking to Avoided. Like, uh, like I said, I have a little bit of a personal relationship with uh, with their manager. Just uh, you know, we talk at times, but it's always good to hear from the players themselves and not just uh, just just make sure that she's actually telling the truth sometimes. <laughs> um but yeah no like it, you know you do you do keep hearing it right they have a nice community a lot of people that are just invested in it uh the brand is working out well it's a new style of playing overwatch a new new way of bringing the game uh, bringing passion back into the game mm -hmm. uh, and it keeps showing in their games the gameplay as well like it, you know if you could keep on bringing new players in and different players rotating them in and out then they might be the scariest team in the world and they're sort of bringing in that philosophy that at some point some Overwatch League team started to do, where you have this one role or one hero that is very niche, but if you have a specialist on it and it becomes meta, you're just gonna destroy. Like <laughs> what Philadelphia is saying they're doing with chips on Doomfist, right? Yeah. So like that, I, I really like that they might be so dangerous that they can do that for literally every single hero. But of course, roster formats are a thing. Blizzard is going to probably constantly say you can only have this many players on your yeah. team so you cannot actually make a specialist on 32 because that would be amazing right where you just have 32 players uh on a roster but i, I feel like we've that. been talking a lot about the, in the interview we're talking a lot about the game right now and uh i feel like we need to let you guys go so we're gonna call a little bit of an end to it tugboat but your last thoughts uh 
I don't have enough time to wrap my head around what you just said about 32 specialists. That would be very, very interesting. Maybe a little yeah. save that content for the people a little bit later. Can't give Maybe. me everything all at once, right? <laughs> this has been yeah. the day two Overwatch Monkey Bubble Contenders Trials here for EU. I'm FBI Tugboat. You can find me over there on Twitter at, at FBI underscore Tugboat if you enjoyed the cast, and I'd appreciate the follow. Man of Class, if I remember right, it's MOC. OW, right? It's just Man of Glass OW. It's underneath the screen. Oh, Everyone man. can see it. You know, gotcha, it's, it's, gotcha, it's gotcha. all fine. And don't forget to make some creative content. We're really looking forward to your submissions for the Gladiators giveaway, both a jersey and two home sense ray codes. Just make something meme, image, video, anything, yep. and uh, use the hashtag GLAD4T2. We'll see you, uh, see you on Friday to announce the winners of that. We'll probably be. Uh, uh, if you follow the hashtag, you'll probably see some fun content come around as well. So yeah, we'll see yeah, you yeah. on that one. And uh, have a good night for now. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same channels for more EU trials.